Unplanned pregnancies are not uncommon. In fact, only 59% of the pregnancies worldwide are planned. The other 41% are unplanned. 27 million of these pregnancies result from contraceptive failure. 6 million occur even when the method is correctly used. About half of these unplanned pregnancies are also unwanted. Ideally, women with unwanted pregnancies should have the right to choose safe abortion. But not all women are able to exercise that right. In Asia, 28 million women seek abortions every year. One third of them do not have access to safe, legal, affordable abortion services. They are forced to choose unsafe abortion, which threatens their lives, their health and the well-being of their families. These women are not a mere statistic. They are people, sometimes people we know. Let me introduce you to Miss A. She lives in Asia, she's pregnant and wants an abortion. She could be a mother who does not want to have any more children or a woman seeking to delay her experience of motherhood. Given the large number of young people in Asia, it is increasingly possible that she is a young girl. Will Miss A find safe, legal and affordable abortion services? Let's take a walk with her and find out. Miss A does not make her decisions alone. The community she lives in and the family she is a part of influence her choices. Let's say Miss A is married. She might be pregnant because her husband refuses to use condoms or buy her contraceptives to prevent unwanted pregnancies. Like many Asian men, he might think that contraceptives cause impotency. He might also believe that they are against the teachings of his religion. But now that Miss A is pregnant, he too might not want to have more children. In fact, he might be supportive of her decision to get an abortion and take her to a clinic. But if there is no clinic, it is Miss A who has to risk an unsafe abortion. What if Miss A was a young unmarried girl? Her pregnancy might be a matter of shame for her family and so they might choose to avoid hospitals and take her to a traditional provider to keep her abortion quiet. But this could put Miss A's life at risk. Let's say Miss A has a supportive family. Will she also find an understanding abortion provider? She might. Some doctors are sensitive and very non-judgmental. But others are not free of the prejudice in their community. If Miss A visits such a doctor, she might be refused an abortion or even a referral. Sometimes, Doctors might refuse to see Miss A at public hospitals and force her to visit them at a more expensive private hospital. In all such cases, Miss A might be left with no choice but to visit a backstreet provider. Miss A's decisions are also affected by the law of the country she lives in. In some countries, old traditions and fundamentalist religions keep the governments from passing liberal laws. Restrictive laws drive several patients like Nase to choose unsafe abortion. In other countries, laws are liberal but services are unavailable, especially in rural areas. Sometimes, stigma prevents doctors and public hospitals from offering abortion services. If Miss A is more than 12 weeks pregnant, in her second trimester that is, she runs into bigger barriers. Second trimester abortions are not available in several countries across Asia. Even where they are legal, they are highly stigmatized and sometimes simply unavailable. Because of this stigma and unavailability, Ms. A might assume that abortion is illegal in her country. When Ms. A believes that she has run out of legal options, she might just seek out a traditional provider. Ms. A cannot plan her life when she has no control over her body and her fertility. Yet, even today, abortion is not recognized as a woman's right worldwide. UN Special Rapporteurs have called the denial of abortion, torture, a human rights violation 
and a form of discrimination against women. Several countries have signed international treaties like CEDAW, which hold them responsible for providing a complete range of reproductive services for women. But Ms. A might not know that safe abortion is one of her reproductive rights. What she needs is information about the law, about bodily autonomy, and about access to safe abortion. This is what women's rights organizations have been trying to do. Some of them also run services that provide safe surgical abortions, and most of them advocate for safe medical abortion. In some countries like Pakistan, Indonesia, and Thailand, local organizations have successfully run hotlines that provide women with information about misoprostol, a pill that can be used to perform safe medical abortion in the privacy of Ms. A's home. Organizations also work to change the attitude of doctors and of Ms. A's community and family. With accurate information in their hands, they are less likely to stigmatize her choices and more likely to offer her their support. With this support, Ms. A can finish school, become economically independent and take better care of her family. She can join campaigns that advocate for changes in the abortion law and become a leader in the movement for reproductive justice and rights. With information and support, there is nothing Ms. A cannot do. But these infinite possibilities begin with Ms. A's ability to control her fertility, her body, her life and her future.